There's a term I use in running called swing pace, and it really doesn't have a technical or scientific term, but I want to try to describe it to you. And to set this up, when I look at runner's performance, triathletes running, the tendency without a cattle prod in their back end is to run all their paces at the same. If they're gonna run 5K, oh, I ran it at X pace. If I run my long run, it's at X pace. There's not a lot of variability or swinging of the pace, changing of the pace. And that's what swing pace means. It means that you're actually changing the pace. We could look back at fartlek or speed play, which has kind of the same definition, but I'll try to define this a little bit further in the term that I use, swing pace. For example, if I'm doing my longer run, and it seemingly is always the same. What happens when I do that? Well, the muscle recruitment pattern is the same. Your use of fuel, your predominantly muscle glycogen and blood sugar is the same. Obviously, it gets depleted as you go through, but you're not changing that pace. And the reality in a race is that there may be periods where you're gonna say, gosh, I, I wanna speed up, and you do. Competitor goes by, you got a downhill, you feel good on the section, wind at your back, and all of a sudden the pace speeds up, a lot faster than the steady pace stuff that you've been doing in your workouts. So when you vary this pace, for example, on the long day, you can vary that pace by doing segments that are swinging back and forth. This teaches your body to spare muscle glycogen, and it also teaches your body, if you're going hard enough, to recruit these faster 2A muscle fibers, which really enhance the ability of the triathlete to run faster. So how do you do it? I like to start off with shorter segments, but long enough to feel as though your heart rate is coming up and you feel the fatigue, the muscular fatigue of the exercise. They can't be 20 second efforts. So I look at two to around seven minute blocks where you're changing the swing pace. Two to seven minutes aerobically, two to seven minutes where you go maybe sub threshold. And even in that two to seven minutes, what I do a lot with my athletes, is on the end of that, I might have them touch their threshold pace. For example, let's say on the harder segments, and let's pick five minutes. I've done my aerobic segment, and now I'm doing the harder segment, and I said sub-threshold, but let's include a little bit of threshold effort, boost it up even more. So in five minutes, an easy way to do it without producing huge levels of lactate is to go 45 seconds to a minute where you're actually hitting threshold on the end of that five minute block. A real example on that longer day is, let's say I'm going five minutes in my aerobic pace. I follow that with five minutes, where four minutes of that is at sub-threshold, and the final 45 seconds to a minute is at threshold pace. I swing it back and forth, aerobic, sub-threshold with a little bit of threshold on the end. And I may have a 30 to 40 minute block in my longer run where I have this swing pace. And it's a huge muscular stimulus, it's a huge stimulus to conserve muscle glycogen, and it really treats you as a racer so that you have the ability in your actual race to elevate that tempo without blowing through all of your fuel and to cause muscular fatigue so you don't have anything left at the end. Again, the swing pace can apply to the bike and the swim. But I think when we look at the runners, the triathlete runners, we really want to differentiate speed. And that differentiation of speed using the swing pace is a real, real golden nugget.